Hello everyone, my name is Don and welcome back to another tutorial video. Well, not as much a tutorial video as my thoughts on a subject I think is really important and that a lot of people have been talking about. Uh, and that is how do I choose a soft synth? Considering that there's so many synths in the market right now with so many different features and so many different opinions, how do you choose the right synth for you? Now, in this subject, I'm going to be using a synth by Arturia called Pigments. I got my hands on this recently and I'm having a lot of fun with it. Uh, Pigments is a hybrid wavetable and analog soft synth and we're going to be looking at how I found it easy to use and how I started getting into it. So let's see what we got. Okay, so now getting into a new soft synth. So for me, there are three major points that really make it and break it if I'm going to start using a new soft synth. Now the first major point is the learning curve. That is how easy is it for me to get into that synth and understand what's really going on. Now for Arturia Pigments, the first thing that really helped me was the fact that they had an entire playlist going through Arturia Pigments and the different uh, parameters within pigments. So that really helped out. Having access to tutorials and walkthroughs is really important for a new synth. Just having another person walking you through the different presets, parameters, and even the environment helps out a lot. You can find a link to the playlist in the description below. Talking about presets, Pigments comes with a lot of presets already. It's all arranged categorically, which means you can choose the right preset for the right instrument. What's really interesting is that these presets come with a sound design tip section. This gives you information on the person who made the preset, as well as certain parameters that that creator thought was really interesting. This is really helpful because this gives you access to certain parts of that preset that the creator thought was really helpful to tweak around with. There's also a super helpful information bar at the bottom of the synth, which shows you information of different parameters and different parts of the actual synth as you hover over them. Another thing that really helps with the learning curve is the fact that all the parameters are available up front. There's no cycling through different pages or a bunch of drop down menus. I can access different parameters of the different sections of my synth immediately. And that's really helpful. Now moving on to the second reason why I would choose a new synth. And that would be the flexibility of the synth. In this case, let's consider that we've gone through all the tutorials and we understand how the synth works. So now what I'm looking forward to is how flexible the synth is and how easy it is for me to get around and actually make changes to the different parts of my synth. So one of the main reasons why I feel that Pigments is very flexible is because of the modulation section. So if you look at the middle of the software, you can actually see this very comprehensive modulation section from your envelopes to your LFOs to even some very interesting sections that you don't really see in a lot of synths. At the beginning of this modulation section, you can see that we have a keyboard section which gives us access to a lot of MIDI-based parameters. We also have envelopes and LFOs, which can be easily mapped to different parameters within the synth. Now moving on in the modulation section, we now have functions, random, and combinate. And this is where things get really interesting, and where I feel pigments really stands out from the rest. First, we have functions, which allows us to apply user-defined slopes to different parameters. Then we have random, which has three very unique modulators, Turing, Sample and Hold, and Binary. And lastly, we have Combinate, which actually allows us to combine different modulators together into one modulator. We also have four macros, which puts important functions all in one place. Another feature that makes pigments very flexible to me are the inbuilt effects. I not only have access to multiple effects like reverb, delay, chorus, phaser, and more, but I can also decide the order of these effects. I can either have them working in a series or even parallel, which is really helpful to have in a synth. Now, the final reason that helps me choose a synth is compatible hardware. Now, though it's not a deal breaker, it is helpful to have some kind of hardware to give you that tactile feel to control your actual soft synth. Now, what I have over here is a Keylab 49 Mark II. And the reason why I really like using it a lot is because I have access to something called Analog Lab. And through Analog Lab, I have access to different parameters from the actual controller itself. I can choose different presets from the controller directly. I can also control different parts of Ableton Live that is my supporting DAW as well. I have access to pads, faders, and knobs, and everything you'd really look forward to in a controller. Well, that's about it. This is pretty much what it takes for me to decide what new synth I'm gonna start using and how much time I'm gonna actually put into it. As always, if you liked the video, make sure to leave a like. If you loved it, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to receive weekly notifications from us. I'm gonna go make some music now.